Hi everyone, Talk of the Town. This is going to be episode four. I'm going to be doing this video. It's also going to be a practice speech for my speech tomorrow. It's supposed to be, I believe, five to seven minutes. So we're going to try to take about a 20 minute talk and make it five minutes. It's going to be talking about hiring people for the right position. And at the 30 second mark, I'm going to start it because I'm going to use that as my timer for the five minutes. And uh, there'll be about six more seconds of hearing me just talking to try to get through things to get to that time. And all right. Career Builder conducted a survey recently. Two out of every three people feel that they're in the wrong position. I can relate to this a little bit. When I worked at Vanguard Financial, I got into a position there that was called Processing Associate. It had to do with working with large 401ks. It had to do with making sure that when money was transferred to certain accounts or withdrawn, it was withdrawn correctly. The one problem with this was it was more of a desk job. You were inputting information. You were looking up ERISA rules. You were looking up uh, 401k law and making sure that everything worked correctly. Now, how does that relate to the first statement? Well, when I took that job, it was down my path of finance and economics degree, and I, I liked it. I was having fun. I liked people I worked with, but I could never really focus in deep enough. What turned out happening was I kept going and training and helping new people learn their skill, and it ended up becoming this thing of where I was better at teaching people the role than actually completing the role. There was many individuals that were better than me over my time of spending time with them. I ended up giving them more than I could give myself. And in that, I could only get to about 90% of production. So it meant that my numbers didn't quite get what was needed to be proficient in the job, at least on a number standpoint. So what does this mean? This means that in Vanguard, you cannot switch positions without having good enough numbers in your current position. So you had to deal with trying to focus long enough in your current role to then go to the next one. And this doesn't really work. Some people are just meant to do different things. And I was supposed, to, I was told I could get this on different role that would, I'd be teach people in that position, but I had to first get the right numbers to, you know, get that, that promotion. So today what I want to do is talk about Instead of that weird process happening, I want to talk about a few ways to make sure you hire the right person for the right position. They're all going to be focused on new employees instead of trying to focus on putting your current employees in the right positions because that could be difficult. That's a new talk for a new day. The five pieces I want to touch on are move quickly and efficiently, write better job descriptions, embrace social media, personality must also fit the role, and keep an eye on reviews. Move quickly and efficiently. At Vanguard, they did a good job in that space where in five days I was hired, I was talked to, interviewed, and offered a position. I've also been applied for jobs where it was 15 days deep and I still didn't hear back from them after the initial phone call. And by that point, I'd already had a job in most positions because any good worker, so most workers that are better than average, only stay on the job market for seven days. So that means you just got to be quick on that portion of your hiring position. Write better job descriptions. you got to be clear on what they're going to be doing there. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone on Craigslist to see these, uh, these job descriptions that were so unclear what was going on that people were basically applying for a job blind. No one's going to apply for that job because they want to know what they're actually going to be doing. Embrace social media. If I look up a company for a job and then I go on their social media, and they don't have posts, and they haven't realized that the internet is one in marketing, I have no faith in that company to be around for more than five to 10 years. There's no point in me applying for that job if I think the company is gonna leave faster than my career will end. Personality must also fit the role. I'm better at teaching. I was put in a job for inputting information. There were people that were way better than me in that position. What you should do instead of hiring me and trying to fit me into a different hole is, Find the best person in that department and hire 15 or 20 of that person. They will do the job better than I ever will. It's That's about as easy as that one gets. Keep an eye on reviews. This one was also in social media for a point, for a while, but over time I felt that it deserves its own portion in this talk simply because it is way too important today. If you don't keep an eye on your reviews on things such as Glassdoor or Yelp, 
or Google reviews even, if you aren't paying attention to those and people are writing negative outlooks for your company, who's going to want to apply and join that company? No one will, especially if you don't have social media content and your reviews suck. There is no point in me even applying for your position. I will never even look at your company again because of those bad reviews. We take the, about the opinion of other strangers on the internet more than our own families nowadays. These are five that I believe are the biggest. Some other ones, some honorable mentions, employee brand, culture awareness. That all has to do with just keeping an eye on those reviews, making sure that whatever the, the cons of working there, you notice, you practically fix. And in the long run, you end up getting a better overall feel for your culture anyways. But as long as you stick to those first five, I do believe you will start putting more people in the right positions. You'll have less turnover, the culture will be better, and you'll have an overall happier place of work. Thank you. Okay, so that was five minutes and 30 seconds. That was actually almost perfect. Three changes. That's okay. Three changes. By the way, I'm at a client's house. So for anyone watching this video in post on YouTube, yes, I'm working with someone else. The one the pictures in the back, I totally did not see those. <laughs> oh no, I might have to like crop this whole thing. That sucks. I'm sorry. Um, nice pictures though. Look at those pictures, so fancy. But I'm throwing all this in. This is not getting stopped. Trust me, this is, I don't do second takes. Um, pretty good, about three or four mix ups. But that's the process if you're trying to learn how to do some public speaking. This is what you have to do. You have to do this like 10, 15 times for an impromptu, aka slash, you have notes, but you're going to try to do it mostly by memory in your own mind of just talking. This is kind of that process. Uh, talk of town episode four. I think we're going to stick with that title. I still don't know yet. I think it's going to be. And I will talk to you all hopefully tomorrow.